Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome, welcome. Uh, I don't have the nice intro that a lot of other people do. They have music and pictures. I just kind of bust in here and say hello to everybody. So, hi, I'm here today with a very dear friend of mine whom I've never met physically, but I'm very connected to. And it, her name is Marianne Goldweber. And I met her early 2000s you know, uh, probably, probably six, seven, 2006, 2007 on a community called Zods, which means seeds in, is it Danish? Dutch. I think it's uh -huh. Dutch in Dutch. Okay. And um, Marianne uh, is going to tell you a little bit about herself. And she lives in Cleveland, has her own space for what she does. So those of you who live in that area, uh, you'll be able to check it out. And she has her own website. She does her own shows on Facebook. So without further ado, Marianne, welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Allie. Oh, this is so much fun, guys. And so thank you. Welcome, welcome to all of you here to watch us tonight. I'm so incredibly grateful to Allie for creating this platform. You know, technology is such a wonderful thing. You know, it's a double-edged sword, however. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and so, um, yeah, so I guess starting at the beginning is probably the easiest way to go. Uh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was interesting because, okay, now we have to go back in time and remember that there wasn't some of these things. You know, there, all there was there was dial-up, MySpace, yeah. and all these chat rooms, okay? Right. And so I happened to come across Zads. <laughs> um on some search for some spiritual whatever and uh and it was so fun because um you know the the players in there i mean there's all kinds of people in there but it was so interesting to see the same people and what they were saying and doing was resonating with me and ali was one of those people and again there was no like internet protocol or any of those things and there was just i mean it was it was it was a free for all okay it really and was so I met, it was so cool because you know uh i met so many interesting people now like ali said we have not physically ever met but so then when zads uh was taken over by something else they tried to monetize it uh and and we all disbanded and then facebook came along and some of these other uh platforms and so we we ended up all coming back together uh mm -hmm. which was you know how it was a blessing it. even though it wasn't the same we said oh it's not the same spiritual stuff but it was a blessing to stay connected i think right you so think? you know the yeah. right people just stay connected and i still mm -hmm. have some of these friends from zads uh that i follow yep. and they follow me and uh you know it was such an interesting time so a little backstory i left corporate um under uh, I didn't want to leave corporate, but I was in banking and mm -hmm. I ended up having bilateral carpal tunnel surgeries from my hands to my elbows up to my neck. And I had permanent nerve damage, so I couldn't go back to that work. Well, along the way, uh, I was getting these messages. OK, this inner knowing was telling me this isn't for you. You don't need to be here. This is, you know, right. this is a opportunity. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm sorry. I was like, you drank the corporate Kool-Aid. How am I going to survive without it? You know, uh -huh. this is all I knew. And so, yeah. um, so uh, through this entire series, it was part of the awakening. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, and I ended up uh, taking my hobby, which was herbs and teas and gardening and those things. And I opened the only whole herb store in Northern Ohio. So I am an herbalist um, and I had a baby. So my son was only, uh, you know, 18 months old when I opened the store. And uh, mm -hmm. so he doesn't know any other life. This has always been this always crazy, wonderful, life. amazing spiritual life has always been the only life he knows. And now he's going to uh -huh. be 28 and you know, I can't believe it. So then, so this is where <laughs> Allie comes in. So I, uh, because I had gone through so many cataclysmic things, I was in the middle of a divorce. I had all these things going on. And so in the height of my business's success, I closed it. Um, mm -hmm. I was under a lot of pressure from people in my life right. at the time. And I, I, I sh again, everything has purpose, but it wasn't a smart move, but I closed the business to do spiritual work full time. So mm -hmm. there was this transition period where I hadn't worked through any of the grief. I hadn't worked through any of the loss. And I was just like a little bulldozer plowing along. And so I took an entire year off of life just to process my own uh, mm -hmm. 
things. And during the time, I found Zads. So I'm, you know, sitting home with, you know, in between two things. And oh my God, it was awful. And so uh, Allie was such a voice of, and so I had an opportunity to open a personal and spiritual development center. And I was scared to death because, yep. you know, uh, I just came off of this retail was awful, by the way, with a kid. It was awful. And <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, I don't like wow. asking for help. So anyway, so Allie, and I said, you know, I have this opportunity to really, uh, so, I mean, I go big or go home. I found a 7,000 square foot old convent, and this is what I was going to lease to get into my spiritual development center. And I was like, oh, it's amazing. Anyway, and I was scared to death. And Allie was like, what do you have to lose, Marianne? Like, if this is mm -hmm. your calling and this is what you need to do, then I would say, go for it, girl. And I did. Yeah. I went yep. out by the lease and within a week I was I moved into this place. It was <laughs> so anyway, that's how I met Allie. And so yep. have, having been with her over a course of a year or so, you know, having these spiritual conversations and really meeting and hearing all these different spiritual perspectives um gave me the courage to really step out and into this arena uh when there's nobody. There was nobody right. doing this stuff. Okay. I mean, yep. you had, well, then, you had people you're that right. really, you know, but there was no like spiritual development center. There was none of these things. And so I always joke that when I had my awakening, there was nobody. There was, um, I had two books and a dead Indian. Okay. This is my guide and two, two or And you books. had him as your avatar. You had him as your avatar. I did have him as my avatar for a while. So the two books, and I'm going to turn you guys on to these. If you want a spiritual self-awareness, these two mm -hmm. books saved my life. And they they were by Jamie Sams and, and rest oh. her soul. She just passed away recently. Oh, she did. Um, okay. Yeah. She, yeah. So Jamie okay. Sams wrote uh, Medicine Cards and the uh -huh. Sacred Path. Right. I also use her uh, book, The 13 Original Clan Mothers. And I've had a moon lodge that we meet up on the new moon for the last 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. Jamie's my girl. And I'm telling you, those yeah. two books brought me to, uh, cause I do channel directly for myself through yep. automatic writing. Um, mm -hmm. and so, um, those are really kind of nice to just give you a spiritual focus for the day. You know, one, yep. one thing to look at one awareness to have, and then you can journal from that and then, you know, process. Right. So anyway, so that's kind of my story. So then, um, I left that and, uh, you know, it, it, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, so I do have a location and I do have a practice. I've been doing this for almost 30 years now, professionally. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I have been trying to normalize this spiritual life um, mm -hmm. outside of the glitter and the hula hoops and all the, you know, I'm very mainstream pragmatic spiritualism. Okay. And so I use my skills as a medium to help people through whatever they're experiencing and giving them tools of understanding. So they don't feel like they don't have guidance. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want them depending on folks like me for their answers. I want, you them want to, to empower, empower them. them. Yeah. Exactly. It's very spiritually empowering. So, yes. so that's yes. kind of who I am. So you also do ghost. Didn't you also do ghost? some ghost stuff. Oh, I do some fun stuff. So, you know, oh, yeah. haunting isn't even a real thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, so when you go to old, I love history and I love old buildings because, so if you want to label all this, I'm a medium. I mm -hmm. uh, can do uh, psychometry, which is reading uh -huh. energy and objects. Right. Um, yep. I am also an archeological medium, which means I can go into a buildings and places and I can read the energies as if, okay. You know, so, yes. and that's verifiable. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also empathic, uh, uh -huh. debilitatingly so some days. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, I teach I think a lot of people like that. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I teach workshops on those things as oh, well. Okay. Um, Good. because again, you know, it's anyway, that's, a, that's another combo. Um, and then, um, and I'm also, uh, clairvoyant, mm -hmm. which is a fancy French word for, I just know stuff. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> Allie. Said, you know, my ex-husband used to call me Scary Mary because, you yeah. know, women just know stuff. We don't women know stuff. Yeah, see, we, we trust we what do. they see and we trust what we feel. Right. And we're not wrong normally. We don't know what's going on, but we know something's going on. That's right. That's just, right. And yeah. we know when you're telling me a lie. I know when you're telling oh, me no, a lie. Especially right? people you live with 
for a long period of time. Well, yeah. because their lips are moving, but their energy is saying something totally different. So anyway, uh -huh. so he used to tell me, get out of his head. I said, trust me, you're just thinking loud. I am not in your head. So anyway. Tell no, him you need to start paying real rent to be there, you know. Oh, no. And he was such a fibber. Okay. <laughs> so he was easy. Well, he's okay. so transparent. <laughs> So what is the, tell the, uh, Gerald Tarostash is the fellow I told you that lives in Cleveland. And what is the name of your, you, you moved from the 7,000 square foot building into a smaller facility. And what is yes, the well, name? Yes, well, we went through that whole tra yeah. transition with COVID and such. Um, I did a lot of work on the road for a really long time. And then I got, okay. I, I got sciatica from driving so much. And oh, so yeah. I do, you know, big events at theaters and I do those yeah. things, but I also do very small events, uh, in a gallery setting and I do sessions mm -hmm. and classes and workshops and you sure. know things like that. So I do have a location. So when I had my awakening, um, I was writing these beautiful things and for years, years and years and years. And so uh -huh. I went to see an indigenous uh, teacher, a woman, uh -huh. And because, like I said, I was all these things were coming to me and I had no idea what they were about. But anyway, sure. and she yeah. looked, took one look at me and she goes, you know, your guides are coming through writing. And all of a sudden it was like this light bulb went on. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not writing this stuff. You know, so anyway, yeah. so that yeah. night the universe woke me up and said, get a pen and said, right. and this is what they said. Um, we're going to be coming to you this way because it's co more comfortable for you. You're not going to think you're oh, losing your mind. Okay. okay. Right, right. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're not going to show up in your bedroom like, hello. Because um, then you'd be. <laughs> or in the bathroom. They did that to me. me. They, they met me in the bathroom when I was on well, the toilet. To, you know, the bathroom is the best place to get stuff. <laughs> we'll talk about that. So anyway, so they woke me up and they, they said, um, the world is going to be awakening. And the people are so far from their ancestral ties that they don't have any elders. And so they're going to wake up confused. And so oh. you're going to create a village. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, what? Anyway, you're going to create a village and people are going to come because they're amused, they're entertained, but the ones who learn and stay will become the new elders, is mm -hmm. what they told me. Mm -hmm. Now my yep. this is way before any of this started to happen. Sure, sure. And, yeah. uh, oh, and wow. he's but this was the profound thing they said. They said the reason people are lost is because they worship the man on the money because he's the only grandfather they know. Okay. You know, in, here in this country, we're so far away from our ancestral ties yeah. Yeah, we that we don't know who we are. You know, we mm -hmm. don't have those rituals. We don't have those indigenous, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. things anymore. And yes. so, it, and so now, mind you, that was way back when. Now, right. 30 years later, here we are. Okay, so in, at two, in 2012 was really when the end of the world happened, the end of the Mayan calendar, that shift uh, mm -hmm. going from the fourth world of separation to the fifth world of peace. But what mm -hmm. I don't think I really understood at the time was that in order to get peace, you have to remove everything that is not of peace. That's so there's true. always destruction, yeah. the four construction. And mm -hmm. so all these systems have to destruct. And mm -hmm. we and that's what and, and again that's what's I, happening. I've been doing this a long yeah. time. Okay, when yes. I thought, oh, I'm just going to go on Oprah and awaken the world. Ah, uh, that is not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it's god! Like, oh, no, it's one person at a time. It I'm is like, one person. Oh, for God's yeah. sake, this is going to take yeah. forever. Okay, uh -huh. but now looking back, mm -hmm. at you know, you don't think you're affecting anybody, but I, but when you look back at all the people I've met and all the you know, watching people rise and come through their experiences and creating these amazing lives. And they're so courageous. You know, we're all, in fact, I had a lady on the other side one day said, Marianne, do you think Johnny Appleseed went back and watered all those trees? That's who I am. I'm Johnny okay. Appleseed. I'm just Johnny. planting a seed. You just plant Whether the seed. Whether they water it or not, that's up to them. But that's another true. teacher will appear, another message yep. will happen. Whenever and, you're ready. That's and that's correct. faith. So the word faith means trust without evidence. That's right. You know, that's and right. I have it's faith. Beautiful. And I have more faith than you do today. Then I'll hold you up while you we figure it out. That's, that's how I see this work. 
So I really love that. I really love that. And um, I, um, uh, I'm glad you like that, Gerald. Yeah, she's fascinating, and she's near you, and you can meet her before I do. So you just go over there and. I would love that. So yeah, give me a call. I'll leave all my yeah. information here tonight for you. And uh, yeah, it's in the chat. I've got it over. Not the chat, but the the show notes. Perfect. So just go to my website. Everything's on there. And um, I have yeah, you know, just schedule time or uh, come to an event. I have. I also have an open house once a month. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a little mm -hmm. come and go thing where people can meet other interesting weirdos like us and have great <laughs> convos and get inspired. Uh, um, I always said I'm going to rename it. I'm not going to, I'm going to, not going to call it the village. I'm going to call it the Black Sheep Academy because that's basically oh, yeah. who I attract. That's who all these people are that are here too. So yeah, we've all, yeah, we're you, not know, it's, sheep. you know, no, we not. are the ones that are here breaking generational uh, yes. and oppressive yeah. systems, yeah. you know, so we're badass. Like, but I like that you're trying to make what other people would consider woo woo. Normal, because that's what right. it is. It's normal. Yeah. It's very normal. And, and guys, I've gone toe to toe with the the right. Okay, the Christian right. right. And uh, I'm I'm going You're to have. Fact, I, just had a, I just had a client's husband uh, canceled me for a wedding as the officiant because um, he wants it. He wants a judge to do it. Somebody who's totally not religious at all. Not that I would do anything spiritual right. or religious, uh, yeah. because he's Jehovah Witness. And uh, and I'm go I'm the devil. So that got canceled today. <laughs> well, and good reason and again, to I, you think, know. Yeah. And we I can speak this in any language you want. You want to talk it in Christian concepts? We can do that. You want to talk about it in whatever language right. we can. We you can know, spirituality it. runs above all that. It you does. Know, religious it does. dogma stuff. So it really does. And Dr. Ann, uh, who is actually a spiritual academic, was uh, was a. Um, uh, American and moved to New Zealand and lives in New Zealand with her family now and teaches. Well, she's she got a PhD in education. She we talk about. It, she said the spiritualism industry, which is exactly what you do not want to be, or I do not want to be. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of people out there, and it's difficult to discern who's doing it for what reason. And it's when you see real folks that want to empower other people and not make you their guru or their you know end all be all uh then you know you're you're headed in the right direction that's the way i've always felt anyway yeah yeah right exactly so i'm not concerned you know again everything has mm -hmm. purpose and val is mm -hmm. you know but it's just not for me and right. uh and again that's not the people i attract you know because no. i saw this yeah. meme one day and it was a fortune teller with a woman sitting at the table and the fortune teller says you know uh you're the problem and and the other woman said, uh, "You need to reshuffle." <laughs> so yeah, I, the universe yeah. tells you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, and I, it's not my job to candy coat That's it right. or yep. you know or do that. I get it. So, no, I get it. Yeah, I love that. So, so Doctor Ann, thank you so much. So funny story. Um, I went to mm -hmm. Catholic school for twelve years. I was raised Catholic, oh. uh, which I stopped being Catholic when I was like seven. Okay, uh -huh. because it was so contradictory, and I'm mildly autistic, so I, it just okay. never, never made sense. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, so when my fourth grade teacher, who was like Sister Saint George, okay, like mm -hmm. I thought they were, you know, they were they were the old habits where you couldn't even see their all you saw was their face. <laughs> I thought they were men in drag, honestly. Anyway, uh -huh. um, and so, uh, so she said to the class, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And everybody, of course, wants to be a teacher or a doctor, or, you know, a nurse or a cop. And I said, so here I am, right? And she's like, yeah. what do you want to be, Marianne? I said, I want to be a parapsychologist. Good for you. She looked at me like I lost my mind. And that's when she put me in the back row and really uh -huh. never let me engage in, in classroom activities after that. That's like my fifth grade story. They asked me who I wanted to meet. If I could meet anybody, who would I want to meet? I said, Abraham Lincoln. Uh -huh. And like all the kids in the class were laughing. And I didn't think it was a stupid answer. I, I really did. I wanted to meet him. Right. And everybody thought, well, he's dead. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm thinking maybe I I just knew I had a connection with the other side. And, you know, I, my mother told me, be careful, be careful, because other people don't understand that. Right. So. Well, so I do I do cemetery tours. And, you know, there's nobody uh -huh. in the cemetery until we're there. 
Right. And we have a very famous cemetery here in Cleveland, which is called uh, Lakeview Cemetery. And it's actually um, was commissioned by Rockefeller. Um, okay. And so uh, um, uh, President Garfield is in, in tomb there. And uh, oh, they okay. have a huge castle. It's beautiful. Anyway, and Wade Chapel was built by Tiffany. So anyway, I've done weddings in there and I do ghost tours. And they're not really ghost tours. They're mostly historic. And we talk to famous people. So anyway, so I talked to President Garfield. <laughs> oh, my God. I've talked to, so I did talk to President Garfield. So if we ever want to talk to Abraham Lincoln, just let me know. We'll... There you are. You're coming back. That's all there is to it. So that right? would be one. <laughs> <laughs> so President Garfield at the time told us that we had to pray for President Obama because there were so many forces that were trying to take him out. <laughs> Says I the man who that. was assassinated, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Was Garfield was, a Democrat? Of course, the, the Democrats yeah, and Republicans got, were different. Right. But he was yeah. assassinated. Well, he actually didn't oh, die right. from assassination. He died from sepsis, actually. Oh, okay. okay. So anyway, wow. so so I do wow. historic tours. So. So again, you know, uh -huh. going into these environments and having all this history, you know, it's like yes. being there for me. And so uh -huh. that yeah. wisdom that they share when we go to a cemetery, they're like, hi, this is my story. And, you know, right. and, you know, this is why I'm buried here. One guy said, one guy said one time, he goes, uh, you know, when I bought this plot, it had a beautiful view. He goes, <laughs> now look at it. And there's like five trees and he can't see it over the edge. It's hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, that is a hoot. My mother did that to me. She won um she won twelve hundred dollars in this like a lottery game. And she called me up and said, Mom, that um uh, my your father and I bought a piece of land. And I said, You did? And she said, Yes. And they had bought their cemetery plot. <laughs> for some so, people, yeah. that's the only piece of land they're gonna own. You know what they're I'm saying? Ever gonna own. Yeah, right. I think so. For them, that was true. But that there's really true. no one at a cemetery. They don't sit on their tombstone going. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. No, it's just bag of bones. However, there. they are there when we, it's a place of memorial for the living. So, sure. yeah, sure. so you don't have to go there all the time. It, you mm -hmm. know, they're yeah, not there. Yeah. They're in your car, they're, they're in your house, they're everywhere. So, they're everywhere. That's even in the bathroom. That's right. No, especially <laughs> in the bathroom. Because that's when you're that's open. So, the water and the drains, and no, really, this is why I get okay. my best ideas in the bathroom. Because okay. between the water and the drains, and this is where you eliminate it. It, okay. It's a meditative yep. thing that you're open to input. Okay. Well, I was on the toilet and it was a 3 a.m. There. And I looked up and they're still. all standing there. They're all in the bathroom standing there. And I'm like, guys, you know, I'm really nice to meet you, but could you just like come back in a different, a different. Time? They're like, well, you should sit and still. Now we can get a hold of her, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they don't really care true. that you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Um, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for being here. we got 74 beautiful souls here. I uh, Too many for me to shout out to everyone. But uh, thank you. I know you're all loving each other in the chat and enjoying listening. Some of you have put questions up. We won't be able to answer every question, but we, I'm be able, we'll probably be able to do some in just a few minutes. But I'm going to let Mary in also. Uh, we're just going to talk about a, a few more things uh, before we get to that, if that's all right with you, everyone. So, and we have an awful lot of people in the chat that are recovering Catholics. So they totally understand. <laughs> you know what, though? I love the ritual. I love the ritual of religions, uh -huh. um, not just Catholicism, but a, a lot of the ancient religions, you know, that that's the part that they kept that, uh -huh. you yeah. know, could get people to believe, convert. <laughs> So the ritual part is the part I love the most. So, yeah, yeah, everybody is enjoying the conversation. That oh, that's good. really good. Yeah, we we are enjoying it. Um, so yeah, no. Um, go ahead. No, go ahead. So, so another part aspect of the work. So for me, this isn't just about readings and parties and those things. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, I am an interfaith minister. I am licensed with the state of Ohio, so I have privileges at hospitals and court and jail. I do hospice, I perform weddings and funerals, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I help people through traumatic events, okay? So that's not work I charge, I don't charge for those things. And so um, I work very intimately with a number of different nonprofit organizations that are humanitarian driven, helping mm -hmm. people at their worst moment. And so I, I work very intimately with the drug and alcohol recovery community. And, um, you know, there's a lot of trauma underlying addiction. And so that, see that for me is a, a 
a, a huge aspect of the work. And again, you know, uh, helping people work through those things from that spiritual understanding, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and allowing, giving them processes to grieve and to understand why these experiences are happening to them, you know, because everything guys has purpose, you know, it's right. our soul came here to create these experiences. And quite often, you know, we're in the midst of, but nobody taught us how to navigate this stuff. No, they you know, didn't. Yes, my family right. only had a hammer and a screwdriver. Okay, that's all I got. And yeah. if it wasn't for the other people inserted in my life along the way, I wouldn't. I would never yeah. have been able to do that. So I do a lot of outreach and volunteerism work as well. So this is where I say, Allie, this isn't just about parties and readings and no, you know, those I, things. And I agree really with you. For me, yeah. is a vocation, and I, you know, and I, I walk it and work it every day. So. Um, I was very blessed to have indigenous teachers as well to teach me the responsibility of this work. Yes. Um, yes. And so, yeah, so it's, it's been a wonderful thing. So that's I did too. I was lucky. I, I learned from, from the native Americans in the nineties and I, I, it, I, it's part of who I am now. I know I'm not native American, but I have those feelings and that belief system and, and so on. And it's just a, it's a lovely thing. And what you're doing is um, well, I think sometimes we also, if you're working with people who are, are having drug and alcohol problems and you just accept them for who they are with the hope that they will eventually c come to pass. Uh, I was telling everybody, uh, I was telling Marianne about my uh, GoFundMe for my professor Sandra and hopefully she'll be able to find the resources that she needs in order to get out of the out of the shelter so she can you know, have a home to live in. These are the sorts of things that Marianne does for her people as well. And uh, because she has that network that, that works with each other in doing so, which is- So over 40 years, I've been working in service industries or out in the community. And I do a lot of community development and we have, okay. you know, and connecting people to resources and resources to people. So, yeah, um, you know, yeah. it's super, super um, important. You know, sure. because when you're in that place, you don't know what to do or who to ask. No, you don't. And there's don't. so much misinformation out there that, you know, like like I just had a client, you know, she's been sending her son to these she she very expensive rehab centers that literally throw you out after detox. So like, good, good luck uh, with that. You're sober now. Bye. And, you know, yeah. for six thousand yeah. dollars when we've got free ones, you know, that are right. medically paid that. Right. Do a whole they year. probably you know, do a better job and not throw you out to the wolves. Yeah, yeah. that's about butts and seats. Yeah, you're getting paid by the true. head, you know. Yeah, of course. So Susan's asking, uh, how old were you when you started using and realizing your gifts, Mary? And did they come on slowly? So um, let me quickly give you a hierarchy of kind of why people are more psychic than others. So um, mm -hmm. initially, this body, the female body, comes with extra stuff. Okay, because we give birth to people. And we have, and they can't speak for themselves, so we have to uh, right. intuit right. Uh, what uh, well, they speak. We speak telepathy. So, then, mm -hmm. secondly, is astrology. So, the most inherently intuitive signs of the zodiac, and we're only talking about your sun sign here, okay? Is mm -hmm. Pisces, Scorpio, Virgo, Libra, Cancer, and Aquarius. Now, it's not that the others aren't; they're just more logical, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Then, the third thing that makes people more intuitive is trauma. So you kind yeah. of come here with a, a bigger toolbox because you're going to have to survive. You're going to have to use the ability to be empathic, to read energy, mm -hmm. to know how to survive it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the mm -hmm. trick for me is teaching people how not to feel everything anymore. So that's what I'm doing is helping people through trauma. So they're not triggered all the time, you know, feeling some kind of way. Yeah. So yeah. then the fourth thing that makes people more intuitive is being a neurodiverse or non neurotypical. So for me, I actually have Asperger's. Okay, it's not noticeable when I'm talking about my topic, but mm -hmm. if you sat with me long enough, I'm I'm quirky. Okay, so I'm very literal. Things go over my head. So when you uh -huh. asked Susan, how old was I when I started using this? So the funny thing was, I already I, I was doing it naturally my whole life. In fact, my my poor mother. Okay, she was raised Serbian, so they're very mystical people. So they oh, have yeah. a lot of mysticism in their culture. Um, but so anyway, so our neighbor, our ho the house next to us burned down. Okay. Mm -hmm. and the man mm -hmm. who lived in there died. And so, um, so when I would come out the side door to go to school every day, uh, Mr. Smith would be, I could see him waving at me th through the window. 
Oh, wow. And so I would go, I go, hey, mom, Mr. Mr. Smith said it was waving at me this morning. And she's looking at me like, what? Like, <laughs> no, I really melted her brain. Okay. So, well, and I could, I could perceive things like in the, in the store, I could hear the fire alarm. I could hear that high whining. So, so just so you know, the other side vibrates very fast and very high. So mm -hmm. a lot of people can't hear that. Okay. Yep. And because of all, I have every single one of those boxes checked. Okay. So I'm like off the Richter scale when it comes to this thing. So I've had to learn how to tone it down. Tone, well, yeah. tone it down and learn to mind my own business and not have an hour. Oh, okay. okay. Cause I get it. Yeah, I get it. You know, cause we're nosy like that. Psychic uh -huh. people are nosy. So anyway, Susan, how old was I? Uh, most of my life. Yeah. And so my poor mother thought I was crazy. And I used uh -huh. to tell her there was dead people in our attic. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I could always perceive those things. Wow. It never really shut off. Although I did try to shut it all off in my early, uh -huh. uh, mid teens and early twenties. As um, most do, because it's hard to know what, if that's what well, you want. Well, and I have a lot of exper mm -hmm. lived experience when it comes to trauma and addiction. So, um, okay. you know, so again, I do believe yeah. Uh, everyone, that our pain does ultimately become our purpose. And so Definitely. who better than you to understand, you know, somebody right. who's there. So somebody who is, uh, that's how empaths, exactly. I, when you're, when you're empathic with somebody, I feel your pain. It isn't sympathy. It isn't, oh, poor you. It's, right. I feel you. And well, it's the, such a difference. Yeah. Well, but the challenge is it triggers our unresolved grief or unresolved yes. stuff. And so that's where it can become anxiety, depression, yep. and other things. So right. again, you know, we can remain more objective uh, in mm -hmm. that empathic connection when, uh, when we know it's not ours mm -hmm. and then how to clear your own energy. So mm -hmm. here's a trick guys. I'm going to give you guys a trick. I hope you have pen and paper. Uh, but anyway, so one of the things I do after an event or before I even go to somewhere sometimes is I clear my own energy uh, it's kind of like then you have this Teflon coating um, and I take a salt shower at the end of okay. every when I get home. So uh -huh. salt neutralizes energy and water clears energy and the drain pulls energy away. So when I'm in the shower, I take a little salt and put it plain table salt. Doesn't have to be Himalayan yep. sea salt or anything. Plain old Morton's. Table. Morton, <laughs> whatever brand you got where you're at. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. so you pour some in your hand, you get it wet and it's sharp. So don't rub, scrub. You just pat it on your head and all the way down until you get uh -huh. to your feet. And I say, this feeling is not mine. I'm praying for whoever this belongs to, but please mm -hmm. take this from me. And as you rinse off, you start to tingle and you visualize all that energy going down the drain. And when you yeah. get out of that shower, you sleep like a baby because you're not carrying around all that energy. It yeah, takes baggage. energy to carry it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you'll sleep yeah. better than you probably have in a million years. So, well, there's That's something I'm going to try. And and it goes along with this question that uh, Jay is asking: uh, Do you see addiction and the link to spiritual attachments? Because I'm sure that addict people who have addictions aren't able to get rid of those addictions unless they're aware that they carry right. them. So thank no. you so much for that. So yeah. I'm not a big fan of the word attachment. Okay. okay. I would mm -hmm. think of it more like an influence. Okay. okay. Um, yep. So uh, because that, that denotes, you know, so I, so what I see is, so when you are in addiction, you're not running the show when you're blacked True. out. Okay. Yeah. And I have seen people's personalities change, but they're not possessed and it's not a permanent attachment. It's, mm -hmm. it's relinquished. It's nothing can hurt you without your free will. Uh -huh. Relinquishing your free will. Well, addiction can sometimes, uh, you're willingly uh, numbing yourself. Okay. So you're, mm -hmm. you are open to influence. Okay. I would call it influence. I would rather not call it spiritual attachments. Um, that is very rare. I have seen that, but it's it's not that common. You have to really invite stuff like that because our not only do we have free will, we also have relatives and guides that are protecting us from ourselves. Right. So they're not going to let that happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. people who are blacked out can be easily influenced by things that are at the bar that you sure. can't see yeah. that are don't want to go to the light yeah. and. They, but yeah. they're also, they, there's a lot of rules over there and they are not allowed to interfere in the life of the living. 
I don't care if you go to want to go, don't want to go to the light or not. Okay, so okay. there's rules okay. over there. Okay, for them, and so the okay. only way they're allowed to do that is if somebody voluntarily surrenders their will. Okay. 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 So and then have to be somewhat so aware you, that they were doing it. Yeah. 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 Well, they're right. not aware of it. That's the funny part. They're not. Okay. They don't realize that the act of you know getting so effed up that you're out of your mind uh, is a, an invitation of sorts. Okay. Okay. I get it. All right. Yeah, you know, and so, yes, yeah, yeah. so I do, yeah. yes, I do see that influence for sure, but I don't like to think of it as necessarily a, a, an attachment, like, like possession. Right, right. right. Personally. Yeah. And I've seen now, a lot of this stuff, so. For me, I, I do, and I have brought up many times for people that if you want to have your guides and your, and your angels to help you, you need to ask them to come and help you because they're sort of standing ready to help you. But it's and the archangels are the ones you can call in verbally to bring in bring them in. But are you saying that it's very possible you don't have to call them in that they are there? Well, they're well at ready? some level you do because okay. Okay, okay. you've already given away your free will. Now you're trying to get it back. Okay, right, so, right, right. You, you yeah. know we do need extra support, and so you have, again asking is humbling ourselves to say sure. I don't I can't do this on my own. Correct. And so they can't really step up until you act, until you change, change things and ask for that. So right. sometimes the action is asking as well. So absolutely. Okay. Allie. So they're yeah. always, they're always protecting you, even when yes. you're dumb. Okay. Yes. But they uh -huh. cannot interfere in the choices you make. Correct. Because you know, you have and, right. Yeah. But, but they are always. And so when you change what you're doing and you, again, get sober, um, mm -hmm you know, and, and start really trusting that bigger thing than you that is helping you, uh, mm -hmm. that other stuff can't happen anymore. So that's really interesting because um, I've had a weight issue on my whole life and I've lost and, and gained and lost and gained. And, and at this point, I'm, I've lost again, but I feel different. I feel as though uh, I've empowered myself more than I had in the past. And I think that makes a big difference. But I also think they're watching out for me, including my whole family's over there. My two brothers, my mother, my mm -hmm. father. So it's like they're all going, oh, what are you doing? What are you eating? You know? Well, <laughs> you know, part of, part of you know, this is my mother's whole family had like congestive heart failure and they all oh. smoke. You know, okay. so the thing that's hereditary isn't the disease. It's right. it's the poor conditioning we received on how to nurture ourselves or Yes. how to feed ourselves, or you know mm -hmm. so why why did were they all sick well they all smoked they all worked on the coal mine ate bacon fat with everything i mean yes. so it's not yes. a wonder we have bad dietary and habits and you know i mean so that's part of it is nurture part of it is you know part hereditary yeah. but yeah. That, you know you're absolutely right yeah and they're yeah. over there going dumbass well because they <laughs> Now they're on the other side and they saw the error of their ways. And now they're like, right. oh, my God. oh, yeah. Very clear over there. Yeah. Yeah. You Put know, that thing down. Don't eat that, please. Yes. Well, but they uh, can't change you, you know. No, they can't. Yeah. But if yeah. I ask them to help me, then, you know, then I'm allowing them to do okay, it. Okay. But and... you might not like the way they help. Like, I, well, <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard they that. Help me, you know, and yeah. they, you know, they do, you know, they. Right. Yeah, you know, they, they put up really obstacles, or they do things, and uh -huh. you're like, "Well, that's not quite what I meant." Well, you better be specific. So, yes, be they're specific. very literal. Oh, well, I know they are. Yes. Well, that's the same way with what you want, um, and and we've talked about this on the show before. But I know Marianne's also. You have to be very specific about what you want, or you're just going to get what it is you have said, including negative things. Because if you say, I don't want, the universe doesn't hear the word don't. And, uh, you know. Well, it, it I just wrote about that today. So if you guys follow me on Facebook, I actually put on motivational things every day. Yeah. Um, and I have a pro page and a person, but they're all for work. But anyway, so today I wrote about that. So the word manifest okay. actually uh -huh. means to reveal. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so we're constantly manifesting. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing is revealing what you need. Yes. So if you want to manifest bad things, that happens. Just, you think it that way. That's right. That's Everything right. you say and think and do is manifesting. And That's so, right. you know, when you learn that 
there's better ways to do that than, you know, but I wrote about that today. I wrote a little That's uh, awesome. <laughs> monologue about what the universe hears and what we say. It's actually pretty, it was awesome. pretty funny. So being clear. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I, I also love that, that saying, uh, if you, if you, th uh, if you think you deserve it, then the, the universe will serve it. I kind of like that, you know. Oh, that's nice. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. thank you guys for being here and listening. Yeah. I know we have almost a hundred people here and um, it's wonderful. Uh, I, I haven't had time to say hello to all of you individually, but I have seen you all in the chat and I thank you all for being here with my dear friend, Marianne, who I've never met, but we've known each other for what, 17 years or something like that. I mean, it's been really? a long time. We've been back and forth. And, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a Pisces. I'm not good at math. I'm a wordsmith. I have the Pisces moon, Marianne, and uh, I'm a Libra. So, that's why you're yeah. so emotional. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm emotional. Libras. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to take a couple of questions. We've got about 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, thank you for asking some of the other questions first. And I think a lot of you are enjoying this a great deal. So uh, we will definitely be asking Marianne to come back if she so desires at any time she wants. And I want to shout out to her Facebook page that she is also uh, streaming on uh, for the show. And I want to say hello to all of Marianne's people as well. And Marianne is a very small YouTube channel, meaning that she doesn't really go there a lot to do streaming. That may change. Who knows? I told her I'd help her out with it. But um, you never know. You never know. I'm a busy girl. <laughs> I, and I, I do all this myself. So I'm very tech savvy for an old lady. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am as well. So just and I love to help. I love to help people to. And I will there. gladly let you. Thank you so okay. much. You're welcome. You're most welcome. So we're gonna so go Mary, Let me run through Mary, this and take a look. Yeah, Mary. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mary first, only because she was here very at the very beginning. Yeah, I started and, at the uh, beginning, and I'm working yeah. forward. Okay, yeah. So Mary Thornberry. Yep, yeah, Mary Thornberry. Okay, hi Mary. <laughs> Yes, she's wonderful. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. I'm so you know, happy. so often we're, you know, some people are just the vehicle to get us to this reality. And then mm -hmm. we, you know, so we all start this journey off on the other side and we say, okay, I'm going to need you, you and you to be my parents and what ancestors and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to need to meet you in like 2024 and, you know, we're going to create an experience together. And so we kind of agree to this with all these different people in the production that's going to be our life. Right. <clears throat> you know, you guys have had other lifetimes, Mary, as her being your mother or you being her mother. And so it was important that you got here, but truly she was here to take the role as your mother. Okay, hold on. Okay. You know, and so often we're so disappointed by the people that we use that label mother or family with that we're not seeing that, you know, family of origin does not necessarily mean that they're your family, you know, and quite often these people that are inserted along the way are, are the people that have been nurturing us, grooming us, helping us, you know, uh, during that process. Hold on. Mm -hmm. um, she's not coming through very strong. I also feel like there might be some grief work that you're still working through on this. Uh, you know, so the other side is standing here, Mary. You know, we can't necessarily hear them because we're still missing them in that physical form. So I always write them letters. Okay, whatever I'm feeling, I sit with it. And I say, what am I feeling? And then I write them a letter. Like, I miss you. I love you. They're standing right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. dream time is the easiest way for us to have that interaction because we actually do go backstage and hang out. Okay. And so I don't think you're sleeping right um, because she's indicating that she would like to come in dream time, but there's some block in that um hold on because that's the easiest way for normal people to get visitation is yeah time we all come here oh, with me that. too yep we do you know we all come here with that divine connection it's just that people taught us to disregard it you know mm. hold on mm. she's so proud of you but 
I feel like you're in a transition. So quite often we have these rites of passage every seven years. Um, I don't know how old you are, but um, I feel like you're in a rite of passage. So again, we're kind of like climbing a mountain and you go, okay, what did I learn from this last seven years? You know, what did I learned from all that? And then what do I really want to create for this next cycle? Um, you're doing great, but you can't drag people with you. Okay. Sometimes you've got to take this journey by yourself. Mm -hmm. And again, they're either going to come along or they're not, but the train's leaving and it's for you. Okay. And yep. so I feel like you're trying to bring a lot of people forward with you and you've got to be okay with leaving some folks behind too, Mary, but that's her wisdom to you. She's so proud of you and she's blowing you kisses and uh -huh. you're, you're just amazing. So anyway, and I know Mary that probably that. just went, Mary probably just went through her satin return because she is 62 now. And oh, yeah. so she, this year yes. is going to be your, is your transitional year. And yes. so again, you know, we don't have a lot of examples of what it looks like to be this age. I'm 63. I just, this is right. my transitional year. And yep. so we don't have a lot of healthy yeah, examples you know. of what to be, right. you know, and so we're all in this transition team. So you need to partner with other, you know, forward moving yeah. women. Yeah. Uh, and she like, has. We're, we're all figuring yeah. it out. <laughs> that's great that's uh, great all right who's um, next let's see all right you you can you see in the um in the comments okay so you can pick whatever you would like to pick i just have everybody that ever left something uh okay. i put it up on my way all right just I'm let reading. me know and then i'll I'm click a speed on reader it. here hold on that's all right it's funny so you know i used to go to the, uh, we were invited to all nations powwow and what, mm -hmm. it was such an honor. Um, so we used to, my niece used to come. Uh, and she was like, you know, eye rolling, like, I really, why are we doing this? You know, so <laughs> fast forward, you ready? She's um, she's actually a, a an American history historian. Um, okay. And she specializes in the Reconstruction era and has, uh, and in indigenous studies. So uh -huh. she's rewriting uh -huh. history for indigenous people. That's oh. No, right? Oh, and she called, she called me one day. She goes, Aunt Marianne, I'm really sorry. I used to make fun of you taking us to powwow. I was like, okay. You know, you grew into it. You grew into the right well, thing yeah, to do. No experience is wasted. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm trying to run through these real quick. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ness. Okay. Which one for Ness? She has a couple of them in the there. First Let's one. See. First one. Okay. I have these intuitive spatial memories of being at Disneyland. It's really weird. I am not thinking about it. I went there two times last year. You know, that's okay. funny. So the, the deja vu is really kind of like what, where we kind of looked at the life, you know, before mm -hmm. we got here, we're like, okay, I'm right. going to have, and, and so it's like, bam, 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 here's kind of what's going to happen. And so when you're standing there at these places, you're like, oh my God, I've been here before. Or Correct. it could be a past life thing, but you're like, because that happened to me in New York City. I have a fun story okay. for that. But anyway, um, that, yeah, so you, it's it's a moment where you've looked at the life before you got in it, and you're like, uh -huh. in that moment going, whoa, it's so, I know where I'm at. I know where I am. I've been here before. Yeah. That's, yeah. That explained that a little bit, I hope. Yes, uh, that happened to me as a child. It really week. did. Yeah. Well, because this might be an important, and, and also those things happen when it's something to pay attention to. Yeah. Okay. Yep, this is true. an important pinnacle moment that you've looked at already. So you might want to pay attention to who, what, and what's going on right. around you because there's yeah. lessons and messages in that. That's fabulous. That's See, just fabulous. Yeah. I've got to just let my dogs out the door. I'll be right back. Okay, CIA, I, I don't think, is that a question or a comment? CIA reported. I think it's a comment. Okay. You got it. I'm passing that up. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, there's a lady here that's Viviani and she's an Akashic Records reader and she oh, has, cool. she's doing it here on YouTube. And so um, maybe you could give her, a, a, yeah, that would be nice if you could give her a. Hang on one sec. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to run through these real fast. Hold on. No, it's fine. Thank you, Ellie. Mm -hmm. I would Mary. Sorry, guys. Oh, Marianne, take your time. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm so grateful that you're all here. Thank you so much. 
Oh, Marion's link here in the description. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Tara Stash. Uh -huh. oh, you're there, please. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's so great to meet all of you. This is such a great platform. I'm so grateful uh -huh. to Al Allie for this. We got to stay connected, guys. There's so many things trying to divide us. Yes. That it's very important that, you know, because isolation is the worst thing for any human being. You know, oh, if yeah. any of us twirl around in here alone too long, it can get delusional very quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And even yep. as a spiritual person, I have to have one foot very firmly rooted in this human life sure. to go backstage for a minute to do what I do. But I don't Correct. sit around my head talking to dead folks all day. Okay. <laughs> The other side does not need Marianne Goldweber. Okay, they got right, God, right. Jesus, angels, all their ancestors. What uh -huh. they need me? Okay, uh -huh. the living yeah. need me, not uh -huh. the other side. So anybody who thinks the other side needs them, they don't. They've they got their home. Okay, yeah, they got a lot of people. <laughs> They're at NASA, and we're on the space station. Okay, they're not away from us. We're away from them. Okay, and we're still out here in the journey. We still got things uh -huh. to do. And, yeah. you know, they're at mission control trying to figure out what the whole thing was about. And so, um, yeah. so yeah, that's, think of it like that. We got to flip that around. So, yeah, don't, yeah. this is a very dangerous place to, I always say my mind is a dangerous neighborhood. Nobody should go alone. <laughs> and I'm not making fun of mental health, guys. It's a valid thing. And, yeah, again, isolation is. can create delusions well, very can. easily. Well, I even when we come on, if we just come on and talk sometimes uh, on the show, oh, does everybody else have a headache or is your third eye opening or are you feeling tired or sick? Or, and we kind of bring each other back down to earth and we say, Absolutely. it's all good. We're having the same thing. You know, well, there's we're, we're reasons going. for it. You know, there's yes, a lot there of is. astrological influences going on right there now. There is. Yep. You know, like I can go in a room and I'm pretty protected, but I can't be in there forever sometimes. You know, it depends on the yeah, room. I get it. No, I totally get it. No, yeah. we really do need to share those things. And again, guys, somebody asked me one day, I had a client for like 20 years, and she goes, when is Mercury going retrograde? I go, <laughs> every three months since the dawn of time, okay? <laughs> Look it up. Yes, absolutely. Guys, create absolutely. a manual of yeah. your own information. So you go, oh, where's the moon? I have a moon uh app on my phone that tells me what the moon yep. phases are. Well, That's Marianne cool. said she was born in a retrograde, so she only gets to have this for one month out of Girl. every... <laughs> no, 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 no. I was born during five retrogrades. Oh, my God. <laughs> five planets were retrograde. And I met a Russian astrologer, and he studied uh -huh. retrograde. So that's really the karma that you yeah. bring forward from other lifetimes. <laughs> yes, And so, oh, this explains oh me to a T. So I've been going backward my whole life, okay? Yeah. He yeah. said, you know, so zero retrogrades is pretty rare, you know? Okay. Usually something's retrograde. Um, right. One, two, or three is normal because everybody's here to learn something from the past, you know, we mm -hmm. bring up. Mm -hmm. Four and five are very challenging people, okay? <laughs> they take a lesson like a brick to the head. And then yeah. he met one person who had a seven retrograde, and they were actually institutionalized. So well, Moira's saying she has six retrogrades. So don't don't buy into that, Moira. Know that you're no, here no, for a really big that reason. Means, yeah. That's training yeah. ground for leadership, I know. Moira. It is. Okay? It is. So yeah. again, I have never followed the status quo. I have always mm -hmm. been that oppositional person. Renegade. Yeah. But again, that karmic stuff that I brought forward was a, a crash course in leadership. Okay. Oh sure. But again, sure. how can you lead if you don't? Yeah. If you don't aren't self aware anyway, so yeah. I'm more I feel your pain, girl. But you know what? When <laughs> when Mercury's retrograde, I'm clear as a bell. You're clear so as a bell. The rest of the world You're is the person to have on. Oh, so Laura said, "Funny, no, I never knew wanted to be a princess as a kid." I had a girl <laughs> one time that uh, I said to her, "I said, Did, do you think you're a princess?" She goes, uh -huh. yeah. I said, yeah, the last life. Okay, girl, this one, you're cleaning toilets. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have both, you know? You got to have but both. She, no, no, she seriously thought she was a princess. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, she seriously. I'm sorry, you're in a whole other lifetime now. There's, there's uh, one that um, I found that maybe you could answer. This, this lady is really in need of help. So she's in isolation because she's lost 50% of her vision from a brain aneurysm. 
And so she's very isolated and it's mm -hmm. overwhelming to be with people. And mm -hmm. that took her a while to type that. So that's why I'm putting her up here. Uh, so any, Dolores, any yeah. So, you know, there's ways to get out of isolation and no physical or, you know, there's ways to connect like this is a, any of these interactive um things are really wonderful for staying connected especially with topics of interest i'm so grateful that you're here dolores so again mm -hmm. i don't know if you're ambulatory or you're able to get out or you know if you have services that can take you and i understand that it's um it's very overwhelming to be with people um but if we can maybe give you some of these tools for clearing energy and and realizing everybody's just a bag of energy and we don't have to feel that but you had a um a trauma and so mm -hmm. that makes you and this, again you lost part of your vision which is something we really rely on um yep. and so you know it's this is a grief process it's going to take some time but maybe yep. find some uh you know nicer places to go like maybe the unitarian church if you have one in your area or yeah. you know somewhere where you're getting together with uh, small groups to start you know but again that um that empathic thing that you're feeling is you're feeling vulnerable on top of it because you don't have your, the same vision you used to. Oh, and, you know, we true. don't realize how we rely on one sense or oh, another yeah. until yes. we don't, you know, until don't we have, have it. Have it. No, I, mm -hmm. I lost my vision for a while because of cataracts and debilitatingly so. And so it was during COVID. I couldn't even get. Oh, God. Oh, my. Yeah. No, really. So I yeah. thought my brother-in-law's car was yellow. It's actually white, you know, and so I couldn't, I couldn't drive because I couldn't, they couldn't correct my vision anymore. And yeah. so, um, so again, so part of it is, um, you know, taking baby steps into, into arenas, coming on here and engaging with people interactively. Mm -hmm. But right. I think part of it is we, you know, you got knocked down a peg, you don't feel confident. And, mm -hmm. and it really might help to have some coaching or counseling. You know, counseling yeah. is wonderful, um, you know, and group. They have group counseling, which is wonderful because everybody in there then is, has the same things that you do. So if I can be more of service or I can help you get some resources or look for those in your area, uh, just reach out to me. It's okay? wonderful. Yeah. 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 She's got empathic senses off the chart. Well, it yes, I... goes off the charts. Yes. Because, yeah. because your normal's gone. Yes, so you're absolutely. touching yeah, everything. It's, you're sure, very you vulnerable. have to renegotiate everything all over Try again. Try the salt shower too, Dolores. I think you're going to love it. Okay. I'm yes. telling and you, if you didn't know. Because see, you're reaching out because you can't see. You're reaching out uh -huh. telepathically and uh, psychically and empathically to feel right. your environment. Okay, you don't yeah. have to do that. Right. That, But again, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a triggered response. And so, sure. yeah, so yeah. you don't have to do that. But I think you'll really um, benefit from trying that salt shower. I even have a spray bottle with salt water. And yeah. I use that before I go in. I'm like, this is not mine. Okay, wherever, like I go to jail. I don't want to court. take this with me. Like, That's no, right. this is not mine and I, before I even go in. And then it's like yep. this one. It's like, yep. that's their yep. stuff, not it mine. It flies away. That's awesome. Hilarious. Oh, my gosh. You yeah. guys are so cute. I know. They're wonderful. Um, so we only have a few minutes uh, and we'll be at an hour. But I'm okay. guessing everybody wants you to come back. So I'm, we'll figure something out. Oh, that's but, wonderful. Um, okay, so let yes. me talk to Vivi Viviani. Yeah. yeah, it's Viviani. Yeah. Viviani. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Hold on. So. Hold on. I need to unpack this for a second for you. So think of all of our helpers on the other side as this giant collective of people, and they send one spokesperson to be the spokesperson for the group, okay? Mm -hmm. They're not separate in separate bodies. They're one collective consciousness, okay? And our guides step forward because they're here. They stayed behind just to help you, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but they're still part of the collective consciousness, so it's not just them. It's they're speaking for the gang. Does that make sense? Hold on. Mm -hmm. And they can only guide you. This is why they're called guides. Okay. They can't tell you what to do. You know, they, they in fact, there comes a time sometimes where they stop talking. 
because they've already told you a million times what to do <laughs> and you're still sitting on your ass and you're not doing it. Okay. So they're like, good luck with that. Cause you know, it'll get more painful till we change. <laughs> anyway, hold on, Viviana. Um, you have a very old, um, man, uh, elder, um, And he's one of your guides. I don't even think he's ancestral. Like he's not like a great, great grandfather or anything. He's definitely an elder uh, and guide for you. Now we have more than one thing that can present itself over time. Uh, I've worked with the same guides for my whole life so far. Uh, and do other, other guides have popped in for some very specific things, okay, going on. But in this case, this is a, a very elderly a uh, wise elder. Hold on. He said, "You, I don't know what's going on for you right now, but you gotta, you gotta trust yourself. Okay, pick a team. You, you can't be Switzerland. Okay, <laughs> you can't be Switzerland. You've got to pick a side. Pick what do you, what do you believe? What do you want? What do you know? And when you determine that." Your guides are going to create all these wonderful opportunities coming to you with those folks, okay? But again, you've got to, I feel like you're being very kind of wishy-washy. Uh, and so you just got to decide mm -hmm. and trust yourself. So faith is trust without evidence. Trusting right. ourselves and this thing that's guiding us. And so mm -hmm. we got to pay more attention to the signs that are happening around you. But you can't make everybody happy and you can't diminish who you are to um to please people they're not happy they're never going to be happy right you know and no matter who you, you become all the people yep. yes stop being switzerland and pick a team uh -huh. okay and yep. just do it that's, that's really interesting guy. because she she has learned the akashic records and is reading the akashic records but many of us who um are even spiritual and talk about spiritual topics sometimes feel like we are the imposter that imposter mm -hmm. syndrome yeah. and do we really know what we you know and it's natural for that to happen but you've got to let it go and know you're not well, without no, also having found, all this ego yes you know? so i've also mm -hmm. found that most people who do this work for others don't necessarily channel or read for themselves right now right. I started doing this by automatic writing for myself. I did not do this for other people. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and I found it interesting how most people, because we can't get through our own thinking to get to that uh, unemotional message that comes from the other side. So you mm -hmm. may want to write down your feelings and then burn it, write down yeah. your feelings and burn it and then get down to this unemotional truth. And that is your guides. That's absolutely you know, so, But true. you got to get your emotion out of the way before you're going to, uh, trust that inner knowing. It's not a hearing. You don't hear it. Okay. Yeah. It's just a knowing, your own inner knowing. And I write that down. I mean, I've been taking dictation from the other side my whole life. So mm -hmm. uh, once I realized it was them writing to me. Right. Yeah. Cool. You know, Many of us always thought that we're going to hear this voice out here. And we're waiting and waiting for it. But no, it's in here. It's I wonder if in here. Kind of like, okay, I'm ready. And <laughs> they're like, oh, they go, they go, it's conversational. I go, oh, so I like talk to you, you talk to me, I talk to you. Yes. So you have to start with, you know, yeah. and then they, they're very matter of fact, you know, it, it's very yeah. loving, but it's very matter of fact. Absolutely. Anyway, anyway, he yeah. said, you've got to pick a team and you've got to just trust yourself. Yeah. You know, absolutely. and if I can help, let me know, you know. So again, you know, I do mm -hmm. virtual sessions. I do them in person. Um, mm -hmm. Virtual sessions are like only $60 an hour. Right, believe yep. that, and yep. you know, and again, sometimes we just need a little clarity and a little. We do, tool. we do. You know, we, we, we all need that. Yeah, we do. Well, I'm sorry we would not be able to have a long, long chat. Uh, but uh, I usually only stay an hour, and I'm sorry we weren't able to answer everybody's questions. But yes, go back and listen to what Marianne had to say about the 
about the salt shower and a few other things. And all her information is below. I'm going to talk to her about coming back because I think all yeah, everybody, can you come back next month? Okay, we'll see. <laughs> well, that would be so much fun. I also yes. go live on Facebook every Wednesday night. I do okay. a quickie, like, I, but yeah. I'm by myself talking to my damn self. Okay, so. Right. But that's you know, okay. But yeah, tomorrow okay. night, I do have a friend who I met through our, uh, through my work uh, uh -huh. in grief. Um, and we're going to be doing a very candid conversation about, um, uh -huh. you know, some uh, kind of tragic conversations, but about hope and redemption. Yep. So um, I'm excited. It needs to be talked that. about. It and I'm grateful for you, Allie. You're well, such, a, you're such a tiny you. bright light. I'm so thrilled to be here and meet all too. of you. Yeah, thank yeah. you all so much. Yes, thank you, everybody. Hold and on, I will be girl. on. Oh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta do this. Okay. Or there's a man here like father for you, and um, you're amazing. Okay? Warrior girl. Yeah. Yes, you gotta yes. tell, you gotta tell the shitty committee in your head to shut the hell up. So this is funny. So we've, I have a women's circle. Okay, we all uh, have a stripper name. We all named our uh -huh. ego. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. And so, because our, my ego is not my amigo, she got me in a lot of trouble. Okay. And I'm just saying, you know what you're doing. Okay. And yes. don't let, don't let the shitty committee tell you, you don't. You're, there you're you go, worthy. Warrior, yeah. so your she's, dad is here, man like dad. And he's, uh -huh. he, he wants you to remember you are, I mean, we all call ourselves a badass, but really sometimes surrender. She is a badass. She is well, a surrendering I will is sometimes yeah. better than aggression. Okay. Sometimes letting yeah. go is much harder than holding on. But you got this. You got it. Go. Good okay. news for you, Warrior that. Girl. All right. Thank you. I and know. I'll see you guys in about an hour on the dream show. Take care oh, of yourselves. I love dreams. <laughs> All right. Have Thank fun. you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much.